now available in paperback. From the author of the critically acclaimed book, The Man Crisis, comes The Woman Crisis. Learn why so many women have become lost in their quest to have it all in The Woman Crisis. Get your copy of The Woman Crisis in paperback at Amazon.com and online booksellers today. A 21-year-old woman was shot trying to rob drug dealers inside of a car in the belmont Cragen area of Chicago. Now, in this incident, it is alleged that 21-year-old Genesis Escobar entered a vehicle on the 5200 block of West Montana Street at Laramie Avenue in Chicago and attempted to rob some drug dealers of their cash. And as she was trying to allegedly try to rob these drug dealers of their cash, the drug dealers allegedly got the upper hand and wound up shooting Genesis Escobar multiple times, then drove back to her neighborhood where they dumped her body on the sidewalk, put some cash on top of it, and drove off. And as her friends and family found Genesis Escobar, they rushed her to the hospital where she was pronounced dead along with her unborn baby. Now the police are seeing this as an isolated incident, but when I take a critical examination of the behavior of Genesis Escobar, it fits the pattern and profile of the feminist indoctrinated woman that I talk about in my book, The Woman Crisis. And Genesis Escobar, based on the alleged actions she participated in, basically believed all of the dysfunctional ideas that three generations of women have been taught to learn from our American feminist culture. And it was these ideas that basically, I believe, led to Genesis Escobar winding up on the road to losing her life. Now, it's clear to me that Genesis Escobar possibly believed that men and women were the same, and that's why she went into this vehicle all by herself, and she believed that because a man and a woman are the same, that she would be able to be able to have the same physical power of a man, and could also use her feminine good looks as a way to go out here and have some leverage as related to the situation, not understanding that by entering that vehicle, she was entering into a dangerous environment where she could never get the advantage at all. Because when you go out here and get into a vehicle with drug dealers, they have the ultimate advantage because one, it is their vehicle and they know where everything is in that vehicle and two, the, you are in a vehicle with men who have upper body strength that is stronger than a woman's. And this is what Genesis Escobar went into underestimating those the power of those men. She entered into that vehicle believing that, oh, at seven months pregnant, she would be able to garner the sympathy of these individuals and also use her pregnancy and good looks as a way to get an advantage over these drug dealers, not understanding that drug dealers are extremely ruthless individuals. And as ruthless individuals, their main focus is on two things. One, their focus is on their money. And two, their focus is on their loyalty to their syndicate because the syndicate holds their life in their hands and they don't care if you are a pregnant woman or if you're an attractive woman. No, they understand that their survival is based on the money that they bring to whatever organization they are a part of and they are not going to lose as related to that situation. No, not to some woman that they consider to be a hood rat at all. No, those individuals, they are going to put their loyalty to those other men in those cartels to the priority. And that's what happened to Genesis Escobar. She walked into this situation thinking, oh, these guys are going to sympathize with me because I'm pregnant. They're going to sympathize with me because I'm a woman. But these, but these um, drug dealers, again, they have no sympathy. They have no empathy because at the end of the day, excuse me, cash rules everything around them. 
and because cash rules everything around them, what they did when they saw her trying to rob them was basically take her out because they were going to be the living ones at the end of the day. And Genesis Escobar, again, walked into this situation thinking she could overpower these men, but these men quickly, again, because they controlled the environment of that vehicle, gained the upper hand, and as they gained the upper hand, they shot up Genesis Escobar, and after they shot her up, they decided, hey, we're going to send a message to whoever sent her out here, because according to some reports, her pooky boyfriend was with her at the time, and they drove her off and then dumped her body back in her neighborhood to send a message that if you go out here and try to try to rob us, this is your fate. And then they dumped the money on her to send another message that her life was worth just about that little bit of change and to send a message that your life is not is, is is nothing to them and this money is nothing to them because they were going to have their respect at the end of the day and the sad part of this story is that it shows that a feminist indoctrinated woman learns a hard lesson about trying to deal with dangerous men because you've got a lot of feminist indoctrinated women who have bought into feminist indoctrinated media that teaches them that a woman is the equal of a man and can go out here and have the same power as a man. But in this case, we see that this woman did not have the same power as a man. In fact, what happened was she got overpowered by these men because these men basically used their power to go out here and overpower her because they had the tactical advantage as related to this situation and because they had the tactical advantage they used it to go out here and one defend themselves from a dangerous robber and two to send a message to others who would try to go out here and antagonize them that this would be their final fate and this would be the end if you tried something with them now it's very again disturbing that these men would murder a pregnant woman but this sadly is how these drug in the dealers did business even as far back in the 80s as part of the crack epidemic because i remember in the 80s during the crack epidemic these type of drug dealers again they had no regard for any human life no it was all about two things again it was about the cash and it was about the loyalty to the crew and anybody who crossed those lines would be dealt with because a lot of pregnant crackheads were found dead in abandoned buildings they were found dead in abandoned lots and what's sad is many of those women were their, their killers were never caught and their bodies were never claimed by their families a lot of these women wound up dying as Jane Doe's and being buried in Potter's Field. That's that there were a lot of casualties during the 80s during the crack epidemic as related to these kind of situations. And again, these drug dealers had no empathy, they had no compassion, and that's meant with them. That's the thing that many of the strong independent women like a Genesis Escobar don't understand. They don't understand that while you try to go out here and trying to play tough like a man, you will wind up running into a lot of ruthless individuals who will treat you like an equal, ironically. And as they treat you like an equal, they will go out here and take your life and leave you on the street like garbage because that's how they see an enemy. And this is something that, again, flies over the heads of many when feminist indoctrinated women like Genesis Escobar, they walk into this drug game thinking they can run this game like a man, not understanding that this game can lead to your life easily being game over. Because if you walk into these situations with these drug dealers, again, these males are extremely dangerous. And these males, again, they will put you down almost immediately if you cross them and this is why you don't get involved with these kinds of people because i've seen many genesis escobars when i was going out here to school like 
IES 148, Park West, and Taft High School, a lot of them running with these dope boys, and a lot of those women wound up suffering horrible fates. Either some of them wound up dead when they were trying to play one dope dealer against the other, hoping to go out here to get cash, clothes, shearling coats, and Air Jordan sneakers and Air Force Ones out of these dudes, or they wound up in becoming baby mamas who could not have access to the father because he got caught up in the dope game and is still in a federal penitentiary right now, or they wound up eventually winding up becoming dead as a result of getting caught up in a shootout, or they wound up in the worst case scenario, winding up getting locked up in the federal penitentiary, taking a fall for one of these dudes. I mean, these are the tragic fates of getting involved in this dope game, but many of these women, because they are just caught up in their hypergamy and caught up in trying to get with the guys who think they think they have the highest social status in the ghetto and the highest amount of resources in the ghetto, what they do is get with these kinds of dudes or get involved with these kinds of dudes, and they think they can go out here and hustle and finesse these kind of guys. And that's what Genesis Escobar was thinking. Oh, I'm going to try to hustle and finesse these kinds of guys and not understanding these men are extremely, again, ruthless and extremely dangerous. And if you go out here and cross these guys, they are going to cross you out of your life. And again, this what's really sad about this whole situation is that because of this feminist indoctrinated woman and the dysfunctional thinking that she had, her first child wound up losing their life before they could even be born into this world. And again, it's all because this feminist indoctrinated woman thought that she could go out here and run all sorts of slick game on some dope dealers, thought that she could be a superior to these men thought that she could go out here and outsmart and finesse these men but at the end of the day as she ran into these men who were seasoned dope boys and seasoned guys in the game it, what happened was she played her final game on a group of dudes and that final game she ran on these dudes led to game over and as it led to game over she wound up with her life ending in the most ignominious fashion, being thrown on the street as she was just dumped out like garbage and dumped out like garbage because these people, again, have no respect for human life. They have no regard for human life. And that's something that this young woman didn't understand that this whole, the individuals in this dope game are not people you can trifle with because these guys, again, they play for keeps and this is something this feminist indoctrinated woman didn't understand because as she was indoctrinated into feminism as related to much of the media she imbibed, she thought she could run game like a man, but the, that the whole thing is she didn't understand that the game that was run in these streets is one that is cold, one that is harsh, one that is ruthless, one that is brutal, and it's hard for a man, and you had this woman thinking that she could get a little sympathy and try to trick these guys out of their money, but these guys had money on their mind, and they didn't mind taking this woman's life and ironically treating her like any other man that was out here looking to go take their cash, and that's how this woman went from a woman on the road to becoming a single mother to becoming a woman who was in crisis. Now, if you want to learn more about what leads to women winding up on this dysfunctional road to becoming a woman in crisis, you can pick up my book, The Woman Crisis, on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find The Woman Crisis at other online booksellers like Smashwords, the iBookstore, and Google Play. And if you want to see me make more videos about women in crisis, you can pick up, you can um, donate to my Patreon, my PayPal, or my Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and Kindle, all about Marilyn. Learn all about the struggles of a faded former teen sitcom star in this absolutely fabulous five-star screenplay. Get all about Marilyn in paperback and Kindle on Amazon.com today.
Now available in paperback and e-readers, all about Nikki, a fabulous first season. The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air meets Clueless in this absolutely fabulous African-American 1990s teen sitcom. Get all 13 episodes of All About Nikki, the fabulous first season, in paperback and e-readers today.